Amen. But how many of us are determined to see God's glory? Come on, somebody. That's why I stay with my face in the book. Amen. Why so many others stay on Facebook. Because I know that his glory cannot be seen on social network. But only in his word. Amen, somebody. Amen. And if we can begin to replace, amen, what we are seeing on a daily basis with the glory of God, things will immediately begin to change in our lives. How many people believe that? To ask for God's glory and to expect God's glory when you ask is a supernatural faith thing. It's the highest dimension of supernaturalness. To see and to experience his glory. On Wednesday we talked about how God's glory would come into the early tabernacle. And when his glory came in, all they could do was wait. Because when God's glory steps in the house, there's nothing that we can do to change anything. At that point, it's God's move. And Saturday, I mean Sunday of last week, we talked about God saying that it's my move now. I'll come into your valleys and I'll begin to speak and breathe on your dry bones. Come on, somebody. And he didn't just erect anybody, but he erected his army. He put life back into his soldiers and said, now we have new marching orders. We got a new command and a new demand. And not only do we have a new command and a new marching orders, but we got new power to fight with. Amen. And we got a new focus and we got a greater purpose. And I don't know about you all, but I know as long as I have the breath of the almighty God in me, I know I cannot lose. Even when my breath gets knocked out of me, I can lean and depend on the breath of the Almighty God to keep me going. That's why, that's the only reason why some of us are still living. And that's the only reason why some of us still got hope in some situations. Because our breath had stopped a long time ago, but the breath of the Almighty God was silent on the inside of us. And it continued to prostrate and continue to bring life into each and every last one of us. I wish somebody knew who breathed into you. It wasn't a doctor that slapped your family. It wasn't a doctor that made you begin to respond to this world, but it was the breath of the Almighty God that breathed into you. And all the doctor could do was confirm the time that God's breath had entered into your body. To God be the glory, somebody. I understand that we've been through some things and I understand that some of us are still going through some things. And we talked about Wednesday, how those things that we go through, the glory that's on the inside of us for away anything that we can go through. And it comes a time when the glory on the inside has to meet the glory that's on the outside. That gives us a whole new dimension of what you call glory to glory. I came into this place expecting to see God's glory. And I'm not going to tell him what to show. Because a lot of times we ask God to show us something, but then we turn around and tell him what to show us. But today I'm just totally submitted to this cause of his glory. And I don't care in what form or fashion I see it, I just want to see it. Amen, Amen somebody. I don't care if it comes in the form of a cloud. I don't care if it comes like a rainbow. I don't care if it comes as a sweet, sweet fragrance in this house. I just want to see God's glory. Yeah. It may be the glory that he put on somebody in this place. And it may be a true deliverance that happens right in front of us. Amen. But whatever it is, I want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've come in this house expecting anything short of God's glory, I want to tell you, you wasted your time. I want to tell you, you should have kept your jammies on. You should have got you something to eat in your bed. Amen? Because anybody who has entered into this tabernacle, you have to enter with an expectancy of God's glory. Amen. So one of the greatest asked questions today is, God, why I'm not me? Why I'm not receiving? Because you're not expecting. 
And those who are not expecting, you're not believing. And I want to tell you, when you're not believing, baby, you're not receiving. But you have to start with an expectancy. And some of us expect so much of man, and some of us expect so much out of man, but I've changed my expectancy from man to God, and I only expect what I expect from God, and whatever you get from man, let that be a bonus, but you got to get what you got to get from God. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. That's why so many people are disappointed and depressed and downtrodden. So many people just feel like they just ain't got nobody because you've been depending on the wrong person. Your expectations have been in your big brother. Your, your expectations have been in your mama and in your daddy. Somebody been expecting things from your spouse. They didn't expect it from God. Amen. It's amazing how we go into even the doctor's office expecting things from the doctor. I stepped into my doctor's office on Friday expecting something from God. Let the doctor be the confirmer. Let the doctor tell me what God has already done. Amen. When I go and see the doctor, when I let him hook me up, and when I let him look from the inside, and when the ultrasound begins to speak, all he can say is what God has already done for me. My expectancy is not in the him, but my Hallelujah, somebody. I don't expect anything, not even from Washington Parish Schools. I understand that somebody got to pay the payroll department before the payroll department can pay me. And I understand that God is my ultimate provider. He is my Jehovah Jireh. And I'm telling you, somebody, somebody right now needs to understand that it's time to chase God and not money. Somebody moving all over the states, all from one end of the town the other end of the town, from one side of the country to the other side of the country, trying to chase a buck. Baby, you better chase God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I changed my expectancy from an income to what's income. And that's God's glory. Somebody say his glory, glory. is income. Yeah. Is anybody in here today? Facing something big. Do you have a big task or a big obstacle ahead of you? Because if you do, I want to let you know that you, you're in a great place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was reading Exodus the other day and I saw where Moses it comprehended in his mind what God was truly asking him to do. It clicked in his mind who God was asking him to move with on a regular basis. In other words, everybody that we got to deal with ain't easy to deal with. And everybody we got to lead ain't easy to lead. And everybody we got to live with ain't easy to live with. And, and sometimes reality set in and you say, God, I got to deal with this. And Moses began to say, You've chosen me to deal with these folks, but you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to help me out with this one. And God began to talk back to Moses. He said, don't worry, I'm going to be with you. Moses said, but if you're not with me, understand something. I'm not going to do anything. We're not going to go anywhere unless you're with me. And I wish somebody, if you don't take nothing, if you just take that sometimes, then you've taken a lot. Sometimes a lot of us moving when it's not time to move. In other words, it doesn't matter where you got to move. If you're moving with the glory of God upon you, everything is going to be all right. But a lot of us want to move ahead of the glory. And some of us are even worse. We want to let the glory move and we want to wait and move after the fact. But Moses was making a point here that God, I'm not going to move unless your glory is with me. All right. God said, oh, I'll be with you. Don't worry about it, Moses. I'll be with you. And Moses said, how would I know that you're with me? What would make me and 
the children of Israel are different from anybody else. Yeah. And see, I like this here. Nobody has stopped to have a conversation with God to say, God, what makes me different from anybody else? I'm tired of walking around being like the average Joe. A lot of people in church, but a lot of people ain't got church in them. Yeah. And it's time for some people to start saying, God, I need you to make me different from other people. I'm tired of walking around just being the same old, same old. It needs to be something different about me than the next man. Come on. God, I need you to put your stamp of approval on me. So that when I walk into a situation and, and when I'm in the presence of other people, they know that you are with me. And they cannot deny me. And they cannot stop me. And I walk with a confidence that I had been walking with. I like it in Exodus 33. In the 18th verse, Moses just broke it down and said, you're going to have to show me your glory. You're going to have to show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. Uh, Y'all come on. I wish somebody was catching on to what's going on this morning. God is giving us an opportunity to see his goodness in front of us. He said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see all my goodness pass in front of you. He could have said, I'm going to let it pass behind you, but that would have been on yesterday. But God said, I'm going to put my glory in front of you so you can understand that greater is coming. And tomorrow is going to be better than today. Day after tomorrow is going to be better than today. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. And I will have mercy on who I'm going to have mercy on. You see, when God's glory comes in this house, he starts giving how he want to be. He said, I'm going to have compassion on who I want to have compassion on. See, I thank God for that because some of us don't want to have compassion on nobody. Some of us want to say, he or she getting what she deserves. And God bless all of us who've been faithful, but don't bless but God said, I'm going to have compassion on who I want to have compassion on. And when I come in the house, and when I'm in the house, I'm going to start moving on them too. Praise God, somebody. Praise God. But he said, but you cannot see my face. You can't comprehend and you can't take in all this glory. For no one has seen that much glory and, and still lived about it. But then the Lord said, but there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. And when my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand. It's amazing how sometimes we got to find ourselves between a rock and a hard spot in order to truly the glory of God. We like to experience the, love, the glory of God laying out on a green pastor in a lawn chair. But baby, I want you to understand when you truly experience God's glory, you find yourself between a rock and a hard spot. But I'm so glad that even in the hard spot, God's hand is covering us. Somebody in here thought you couldn't see his glory because the hell you've been going through. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody in here felt that the glory wasn't for you because you've been pushed back in the cleft of a rock. But I'm here to tell you today that it's you that God is coming to see. It's you that he's shielding with his all. So that's is that it? Is it more? So the glory is the manifested presence 
of God. God's glory is his manifested presence. That's why we're crying out for it because we want just not the presence of God, not the faith presence. Because we have faith, brother, which means that we know the word that it says, no, I will be with you, even to the end. And it's just deep down in my heart, I know that he's with me because he says. But I want to go to a higher dimension. I want to go to a dimension where his manifested presence is seen and felt by me. Are y'all there? His presence consists of all of God. All of God. His presence is all of him. All that he has and all that he's going to do. Come on, somebody. A lot of times we want things to happen from God without his presence being there. How God going to do something for you and his presence not be with you? We kind of like the centurion, you know. God, I ain't worthy of your blessing. Just send it to me. No, God, I want you here with me when I get it. I want to feel you here. You know, I want to see what you're doing. I want to, be, I want to encompass all the glory. I want to be confident and bold that you're not just blessing me, but you're here with me. See, 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 see the thing about it, uh, when, 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 when we give kids Christmas gifts and birthday gifts, we, we don't send them in the room to go and open it while we be in the other room. up the blessing. We want to be present. It's something about every time they open one, they come and embrace you with a hug and they come and embrace you with some praise. And I want the presence of God right there because every time he bless me, I want to embrace them with praise. So when his glory shows up, 
his glory shows up to create whatever he wants. We often forget that God is the creator, which means that if something does not exist right now, when he shows up, he can create it and make it exist. Somebody didn't get that. In other words, uh, uh, right now, the, the marriage is bad. It's about gone. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then God's glory comes, the creator comes and says, I'm not going to fix that mess that you're crying about. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a whole different relationship. I'm going to create a totally different marriage. I'm going to create a totally different situation. Why? Because I am a creator. And if I can create heaven and earth, I can create a better situation for you. Uh, we we too caught up in the mechanic days. We thank God a shade tree mechanic. We thank God gonna come and 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 and, 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 and go on our, our lifehood and begin to tweak and twist and tighten up on some things and and, and put a new this and a new that there and and, and 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 we got to go on with the old situation. But God said, baby, I create. of 
this supernatural glory, but once we get there, we got to get back and let God do his thing. It's his glory now. Oh my God.
come. Uh, sometimes God has to come late. Sometimes you don't show up till after the lights are off. And sometimes you don't show up till you already lost them. Uh, sometimes you don't show up till it's already over. Yeah. Oh my God. Somebody ought to say right now, I don't care when you come, just show me your glory when you come. He showed up and he said, what's up? What's going on, y'all? Out of respect, he said, oh, Lord, how you doing? We love you. But if you had come, if you had just heard me pray to you last week, if you had just moved a couple weeks ago, things wouldn't be like it. He said, but where is it? He said, he's down there in the ritual. But, uh, what, what, uh, yeah. what, uh, my faith is still all right. God. He said, but no, I don't need your faith right now. But God, I still feel your anointing. God said, but I don't need your anointing right now. I just want to know what the situation is. Oh, but my situation has died a long time ago. My situation ran out on me a long time ago. He ran out a long time ago. I ain't had that in a while. It's gone. He said, but take me to your situation. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Here we go again with rocks and hard places. Somebody must be having a hard time in this house. Here you go again with a rock and a hard spot. He's in a rock with a rock on top of him. But I want you to know that the rock, the true rock is present. A rock that's harder than any rock that you can ever be. Come on, somebody. One that's going to change your situation. Come on, somebody. And Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And he said, take away the stone, he said. And I want you to know that Mark takes the time to say, but Noah, the sister of the dead situation. And Jesus said, did I not tell you, if you just believe, you will see the glory of God. A lot of us, like Martha, we, we stop in the flow. God is beginning to roll back stones in your life. And God is beginning to roll back things in your life. And you hardly wait, but wait. I'm a close because I can feel the presence of the God just kind of coming in this place. And I had a few more scriptures, but I'm gonna move just to the last one. In order for us to truly see the glory of God. It comes a time when Jesus Christ comes back in his true glory and we got to see that in order to be able to go back with him. But if we can't see the glory today in the house, if we can't see the glory tomorrow in our own house, how can we see the glory when that time comes? In other words, our spirit has to become conducive to seeing glory. We got to have seen glory. We, we have to know what glory looks like in order to experience glory when it comes. In Romans.
Romans chapter 1, it talks about people who traded their glory. They gave up the glory of God for images of God. To follow after them. And God gave them over to depraved and reprobated minds. I'm crying out to somebody today, don't stop this flow. In other words, you can't live how you want to live. And think that you're going to receive his miracles. You can't live like you want to live. Think you're going to receive his glory. Let me tell you something. You know it ain't right. It don't take me coming to you to tell you it ain't right. But I want you to understand that you would just know from your inside that it's not right. And move upon the fact that you know it's not right. Then you get yourself in a situation where you become eligible once again for the glory of God. But I'm telling you, that don't stop his flow. There's a flow of God in this place. There's a flow of glory in this place. You better live like you're supposed to live. Because the same glory that blessed. When Moses was leading the people, it's the same glory that killed the people who refused to live according to the leadership that they under. And I decree to every person that's not living saved right now. I decree, don't you stop the flow of glory. I love you, but I'll leave you. In other words, baby, I love you, but I'll say goodbye. I'll preach over you, and I'll let the manifested glory come in this house. Because nobody is more important than the glory of God in this place. Stack up. Be blessed. If you live it, when somebody where you're supposed to be living, it's glory. Thank <laughs> you. 